Good morning to one and all present here. I am Srileka, Marketing Analyst at Manage Engine. In today's webinar, we have our speakers, Giridhar Ram, Cybersecurity Specialist, and Shweta, uh, PIM Specialist. Uh, just past this year, organizations have faced device processor vulnerabilities, increasingly complex DDoS attacks, an increase in business email compromises, evolving ransomware variants, and vulnerabilities in serverless apps. Hackers who utilize and develop these threats aren't going to stop anytime soon. And IT security is a never-ending process. According to the latest cybersecurity breach survey by the UK government, 43% of the businesses experienced a cybersecurity breach or an attack in the last 12 months. With the advent of new and more stringent policy regulations, enterprises have begun to realize the gravity of data threats and subsequent threats but are apparently yet to invest adequately in a resilient cybersecurity strategy. With that being said, in today's webinar, we are going to discuss how when building a cybersecurity strategy, an enterprise can take two approaches, preventive or, as, or commonly known as proactive and reactive. For the most part, prevention is better than cure. Cyber criminals are constantly changing their attack strategies Hence, it's important for businesses to detect and preempt attacks before they happen. A, pre a proactive strategy typically involves assessing incidents and warding off any potential vulnerable points before they could be exploited. Let us now understand how proactive strategies with regards to uh, privileged identity management and unified endpoint management will help in detecting and circ circumventing any potential attacks in the future. Uh, before we get into the session, I would like to announce that we have a quick feedback survey right after this webinar session, uh, which will be helpful for us to, you know, gauge and um, analyze how the session went. So I request you all to uh, finish the feedback right after the webinar. And also let us know if you face any technical difficulties with respect to audio and the screen. With this, I hand over the control to Giridhar. Thank you, Deka. Thanks for the brief introduction to our webinar session. So welcome you all to the Building a Resilient Cybersecurity Strategy webinar, the part one. So myself, Girdar Ram, so I'll be taking care of the EVM part of proactive measures that you need to deploy to enhance your enterprise cybersecurity. So this will be the agenda for today. Initially, we'll be looking at cyber attacks that happened in 2018, and we'll also look into attacks that can happen in 2019. Slowly, we'll be understanding the challenges that IT security pros have to face with cybersecurity. Then we'll see how an UEM solution can make a difference and help you mitigate or resolve these complex cybersecurity challenges. Followed by that, I'll give you a few best practices for 2019. In the second half of this session, we have our speakers, Shweta, who will talk about the inside attacks, few findings and predictions for 2019, and she will let you know how privilege access management can help in proactive cybersecurity. So, we'll look into cyber attacks that happened in 2018. Though cyber attacks are evolving day by day, their scope and range are quite vague. So I have handpicked few cyber attacks that are pretty common in 2018. First thing is first, the malware. This is the common type of cyber attack that happen across businesses. When we say malware, it includes ransomware, trojans, worms, viruses, etc. A few top malware that happened or that caused chaos business in 2018 includes WannaCry. So that is uh, reasonable the name here because we already are familiar about this WannaCry in 2017 and it is still causing chaos to businesses in 2018. Followed by that we had Serbo, Yamotech, Coacher, CoinMiner and few other malware which caused chaos in 2018. So speaking about malware, here are some alarming numbers for your display. In 2009, we had 
29.48 million man was existing, but in 2014 it was close to 336.404 million, followed by 2018 it was close to 838 million. So you can see new malas are being identified every year and the numbers are going to increase in 2019 as well. So next threat here is ransomware. Since we are already familiar a lot about this ransomware, how it works, what it expects from businesses, I will switch over to the next thread, which is zero-day exploits. So zero-day exploits happen when vendors and application do not support patches on the first day of the vulnerability being disclosed. So until this time, the hackers can exploit these zero-day vulnerabilities and take over your business data in short time. So this is about zero-day exploits in brief. So let's see some numbers on zero-day exploits. In 1999, it was close to 894 vulnerabilities were only the existing ones. But if you can see in 2010, it was close to 4K, and now in 2018, it's close to 14K, which is quite alarming. The next important stats here is 54% of companies experienced one or more type of cyber attacks targeting IT infrastructure. And these include 77% of attacks utilizing the zero-day exploits or fileless techniques. The next threat here is man-in-the-middle attack. So this attack is goes unidentified because most of the security pros do not have a visibility over this. This man-in-the-middle attack will intercept your communication when your users are communicating with your clients or communicating among themselves and fetch data that is business critical or business sensitive. So this attacks started in Britain when Lipton couples initially were about to sell their property and they communicated their bank account details to the lawyer for the property's cash to be returned to the bank account. So this is where the hackers hopped in and they gave an alternate account number by tracking the Lipton couple's emails. This is where the intercepting part comes in and the couple's almost lost $333,000 of their money. So next threat in 2018 is DDoS attacks. The DDoS attacks will target servers or service and it will flood them with internet traffic making them deny the actual purpose. So this is about DDoS attacks, and these attacks primarily target viewers with creating more number of botnets. Almost 44.7% botnets are being created in 2018 targeting viewers, followed by South Korea and Italy. In cyber attacks that can happen in 2019, which includes the primary name here is AI. We all know AI is developing enormously and very fast. So these AI can be beneficial to organizations or it can turn against organizations if the hackers are able to use them for their own advantages. Because AI learns from past scenarios to update itself. According to a report from their group, 87% of viewers use AI and 91% of security pros are concerned that AI can be used by hackers to launch sophisticated attacks. So this makes the AI very critical for businesses. So if the IT security pros have proper skills to use AI to their advantages, so does hackers. So let's say AI can be a double-edged knife, allowing hackers to deploy more sophisticated attacks. For example, brute force attacks will be more targeted allowing them to narrow down the passwords, making them easy to crack the passwords based upon geography or demographical factors. The next threat that can happen in 2019 is sandbox evading malware. We all know the containerization part of EMM. So for, who, for those who doesn't know about containerization, this is a feature that comes along in EMM, which will allow your corporate data to be segregated from the personal data in the BYOD devices. So this corporate data will stay safe in your containers, in your corporate containers, using this sandbox technology. 
So there can be malware which can evade this sandbox technology and get into your business information and extract those data. So these malware can be seen increasing in 2019. Followed by that, compromising IoT devices. We all know how IoT devices are evolving in recent time along with AI. An Apple Watch and wearable, a smart home with Google Mini or Amazon Echo, or an automated car, a lot of wearables can bring in a lot of say, cyber attacks, for example, a DDoS attack. More botnets can be created if proper security controls aren't targeted for this IoT devices. The next threat that can happen in 2019 is social engineering attacks. I'm pretty sure it's already happening in the market in 2017 and 2018, but in 2019, this ratio will go high. So, social engineering attack is a manipulation, psychological manipulation with some human interaction which can get into your business information through normal communication. So, hackers can use different type of techniques to deploy or practice a social engineering attacks, which includes a simple phishing or spear phishing, a targeted phishing or free texting, cold calling people, cold calling target victims, tailgating or baiting or scareware. So all these techniques can be used by hackers to deploy or launch a social engineer attack. And guess what? We do not have proper security controls to recover from the social engineer attacks. All you can do is educate your users and employees regarding the social engineering attack so that your business data do not get leaked out of the mind or through your com oral communication. So now that we saw about the threats, let's understand why this hap why this threats happen in the industry. It's because your security professionals have to face a lot of challenges regarding cybersecurity. So what are the challenges? They need to take care of complex devices, which includes the device types, models, firmware types, and their operating system. It could be a normal server, Windows server, or a virtual machines with virtual servers, laptops, smartphones, tablets, iPad, or EOS devices. So all these devices has to be managed by your security professional from a single desk, which may be an overwhelming task for him. So the next challenge is complex applications. Along with complex devices, do come different type of applications based upon the platform. It could be Windows applications, a Mac application, Linux, or Android or iOS applications. So all these complex applications needs to be managed from a single console so that your IT security pros do not spend a lot of time taking over fixing vulnerabilities in your network. The next challenge here is different type of users. There could be different type of employees existing in your organization. For example, an employee could be a designer or a marketer who sits in your campus for the whole day doing his daily routines. Or he could be a business development executive who will be managing attending meetings across geography. And there could also be contact based users who will be there for, with your organization with a, for a year or two. And also you will have clients visiting your campus once in a while. So you, your IT administrator or a security pro has to take care of all these complex users from single desk. So this is also going to be a tiresome task for you. So this is the third challenge your IT security pro will be facing. Followed by that, you will have cloud computing. We all know cloud computing is evolving in recent times. Most businesses are preferring cloud-based software because the vendors are going to take care of the data security and database management. So you're going to upload your business data into this cloud software through browsers, which is going to be a single touch point for your users and employees. When those employees access those browsers, they're going to input their personal data as well as the corporate data. So this is where you need proper browser security management because all your business data are uploaded to your cloud software through browsers. So you need to think twice now whether you have proper security controls for the single touch point browsers. 
It could be a Chrome, a Firefox, a normal Internet Explorer, but you need to make sure you have a common multi-browser management system equipped in your organization to overcome this security breaches like man in the middle or man in the browser attacks. Now that we have seen different challenges in the cybersecurity industry, let's understand how an EVM solution, Unified Endpoint Management solution, can help you in enhancing your cybersecurity and resolving these challenges from single console. All your complex devices can be managed using our UDM solution because it's going to take care of your servers, your desktops, laptops, smartphones, and tablets, iPads from one single console. So you'll have your IT administrator's productivity going up and you'll have very less efforts to put in and also you can rectify on your cost spent on multiple solutions for multiple different purposes. The next challenge we spoke about is applications. Yes, using unified endpoint management solution, you'll be able to manage all the complex applications starting with Windows, Mac, Linux, and Android application or iOS application, including third-party applications. So all these complex applications can be managed using the EVM solution. Your IT administrator will be able to identify the missing patches in your environment, test, download the patches from the vendor websites, test the patches, and deploy them to the targeted machines or the vulnerable machines before it's too late for a hacker to hop in. So the second challenge can also be handled using our UEM solution. The third one is complex users or different type of users. With UEM, you'll be able to identify your users' logging and logout time and what are the business documents they can access from the particular devices. You can also geofence the devices which will bring in more user control. So with UEM, you will have a bird's eye view over your users traveling across geography from a single touch point. The next challenge we spoke about is cloud computing and the importance of corporate data being shared to browsers. So with proper security controls being deployed for your browsers from your IT administrator, he will be able to identify what are the data that's being updated into your systems and what is being downloaded into your systems. So he can take care of Chrome, Firefox, IE, and Safari browsers and define few policies, data policies, or threat detection policies which could bring in better control to your cloud computing technology. So these challenges and solutions are from UEM. Now let's look into the more priority part, which is data security and use of privacy. So when you speak about data, your data in any organization or in any business are gonna be of different types. It could be addressed, it could be on move, or it could be in use or in a process. So your data could be uh, used in mobile devices or desktops. If it's gonna be in desktops, probably you'll have better control because it's gonna be static. But when you take, take mobile devices into consideration, securing the data on mobile devices, it's gonna be a challenging task. With EEMM, which is a part of UEM, you will be able to secure your mobile devices using mobile application management, containerization, and mobile content management features which come along with an EMM solution. You can also secure the email communication that's happening via mobile devices using conditional exchange server, which will define policies for your email communications. Also, you can define policies for attachments so that your employees or users can view those attachments only through a managed app. Identifying compromised devices in your network or in your business can help you avoid DDoS attacks that can take your compromised devices for botnet launch and increase the bandwidth. You can also equip containerization to bring in more control to corporate data that's existing in this remote or mobile devices. Along with data security, it can also offer use of privacy. An EM solution will be able to define perimeters for IT technicians 
so they can restrict the privilege access for few technicians. For example, a IT technician sitting on the first floor will have access to only the documents and accounts of users in the first floor, while he will not be able to access the other users sitting in different branches or different floors. So by this, you are ensuring your users that employee privacy are retained. You can also deploy them to your employees so that your business data do not come along to other users which are who are sitting in different departments. So now we discussed about the threats that happened in 2018 and what could happen in 2019. Then we saw about the challenges and also the solution using UAM. Now let's look into the scenarios and examples in real time. Scenario one. A new cyber attack is spreading across countries. For example, WannaCry. Will our IT administrators be able to fix this using an automated patch deployment procedure? Yes. In case of WannaCry, you will be able to mitigate this scenario because it was a vulnerability that existing in the port. Vulnerability is called as eternal blue. So once you fix this vulnerability using our configurations, predefined configurations, you will be able to block the ports which the particular vulnerability eternal blue was exploiting. So after doing that, you can go ahead and deploy the patches using our automated patch deployment procedure to the targeted machines. So yes, in case of WannaCry, we were able to uh, resolve the issues for our customers and users, but I'm not sure what the future holds for us. Let's look into the next scenario. Scenario two. Employees can plug in USB drives to steal business sensitive documents from computers. How to prevent these insider threats? With UM solution, you have the configuration called USB security management, which will allow you to restrict and allow the predefined USB drives in your organization. So any anonymous drives accessing your organization's network or devices will not be able to get information from those devices. So you can also map your employee's USB drive so that only those USB drives can be used in the devices. Scenario 3. A data breach into any personal app can leave your sensitive information in business app wide open. How to pre prevent these unforeseen man in the disk and mobile malware attacks? So this man in the disk attack happens when there's a breach into your personal app. And this personal app then utilizes its backend malware that's existing behind our malicious intent, which exploits into sandbox technology and fetches information in your corporate or business apps. So with proper containerization and mobile application management in place, you will have separate containers for your corporate data so that any breaches that happening in personal data of your users in the VOD devices will not be able to penetrate into the containers for the business data. So these attacks, the man in the disk attack and mobile malware attacks can be prevented if you have proper UEM capabilities which includes EMM and mobile application management features. Scenario 4. Employees can lose their smartphones at times. Along with their lost devices goes business sensitive data. How to recover these devices and the data stored in them? So with UEM, you will be able to geo-track the devices and you can also track the history of location. So apart from this feature, you will also be able to remotely wipe the corporate information as being stored in the devices. So these two features can primarily help you with securing your devices and, and deleting the data if in case the scenario is worse. Along with this feature, you will also have geofencing which will restrict these devices only to certain geographical location. So this is how you will be able to secure your mobile data. Scenario 5. In case of the processor box, meltdown and spectra, the threat was at hardware level and the patching procedure was also quite complex as it required AV compatibility check. Can a UEM solution mitigate these sort of complex situations, the hardware bugs? Yes, in case of meltdown and spectra, we were able to resolve the issue for our customers because our solution 
comes with, not only with the automated patch deployment, it also comes with few configurations which can be deployed in case of this kind of complex situation. In the case of Meltdown and Spectra, you, you should make an AV compatibility check before you deploy the Microsoft patches. So if you do not make this AV compatibility check, you may face the blue screen of death crashing. So we were able to check for this AV compatibility and deploy the patches. Guess what? We were able to automate all of these to make things easy for our customers. Scenario six, when two employees communicate over a mail, they can share business sensitive documents as an attachment. How to make sure this communication and the information shared among them stays secure? So this is where the EMM, one of the UEM comes inside, one of the feature of UEM comes inside. You will have this conditional exchange access, which will define policies to restrict email communications and bring extra level security to all the email communications that happens using a business managed apps. So regarding the attachment, if an employee is gonna download the attachment that is communicated through an email, he will be able to download this attachment only using a managed app, which will not be able to be breached out of from the out of the container. So this is gonna bring more security to your business documents. So that's with scenario six. Now let's look into the different solutions that is being offered from the UEM domain of managing. The first solution here is Desktop Central. I'm sure most of you are familiar about this name. This is an EDM solution which comes along with patch management, software management, OS imaging and deployment, IP asset management, remote control, all the MDM capabilities and configurations which can be like different configurations including firewall, browser configuration, printer configuration, user and group management so on. Even the registry settings in case of Meltdown and Spectra comes under this configurations. Followed by that, we have Mobile Device Manager Plus, which takes care of only the EMM part, Enterprise Mobility Management, which includes the below features. If you can see the containerization, email security management, device management comes along with the mobile application management and mobile content management. So the remote troubleshooting is currently supported for Sony and Samsung devices. So the third guy here is Browser Security Plus, which is the new, new product from UEM Suite. So this Browser Security Plus will help you resolve the cloud computing challenges, the browser-based challenges that's happening in the industry. This can happen and bring in a lot of data leakage policies, threat detection policies, the complete add-on management, which usually is the look for for most of the attacks, the cyber criminals launch over browsers. It's gonna help you manage the extensions. It also gonna bring in the sandbox technology using the browser isolation feature, which will prevent all your corporate information and personal browsing in a separate containers. Along with that, you will also be able to define whitelisted websites and backlisted websites for your organization using the browser lockdown feature. So this is about Browser Security Plus. Now let's see, Center of for Internet Security, the organization which researches, which is researched on cyber security, have defined 20 secret security controls for establishing an effective cyber security strategy. So Desktop Central, our UEM solution, can help you with 50% of it. 10 out of these 20, security control can be deployed or established using our UEM solution, Desktop Central. You can probably take a look at our infographics here, 10 security controls, which will clearly show you what are the different controls we are supporting in Desktop Central. So the first control is authorizing unauthorized software, Managing hardware. The third one is defining configuration at hardware and software level. The fourth, fourth one would be dealing with vulnerabilities. Fifth is privilege access management controls. Following protecting browsers by defining 
the whitelisted browsers, taking care of network ports, protecting data, and other controls which you can browse into once you read into this infographic. Now getting back to the presentation, so I will define few best practices which you can follow for 2019 to bring in an extra level of cyber security controls to your organization or businesses. The first one would be automated patch management. This is going to be a very primary security control. So most of the vulnerabilities do come in your organization, can happen in your organization because this is going to be a continuous process. So you need an automated patch management procedures being established and monitored control continuously to avoid any zero day exploits or unknown or unforeseen zero day exploits. So followed by that, you need IT asset management controls to take care of software and hardware that existing in your business. So this is where your USB security management comes into play. So along with that, you should also be able to take care of your users in group, group privilege management. Your users could go remote and so you need to take care of those users who are traveling around countries for the business meetings. So believe me, in 2018, it was more device-based management, but in 2019 ahead, we will be having user-centric approach and user-centric management to bring in extra level IT security to your business. So followed by that, you need to make sure you have proper firewall policies and browser configuration policies being deployed for your business. You also need to take care of BYOD management, mobile application management, to take care of your mobile devices, even the corporate owned devices, or corporate owned and personally equipped devices. The final practice should be the proper data management lifecycle. You should be able to identify how a data enters your business, how a random data enters your business, where it is being stored, how it is being processed, and when it is being deleted from your business. You also should be able to identify the data that are being stayed at rest, in motion, or probably move, and also that is in process. So having an overview of all your data that is existing in your organization will help you define policies to increase your data security. So when you speak about data security, we all know the one name, the GDPR, and it's, it's, it came into force in May 2018, which is where the business are struggling to become compliance still now. So for this purpose, you can go ahead and read a book which is based about endpoint management. So our UEM was able to handle this GDPR compliance and the data security procedures with 14 features. So the book name is 14 endpoint management features that can help you achieve and sustain GDPR compliance. So probably we'll share this link in chat for you. You can take a look at the book and see what are the different features from endpoint management will assure and give you better data security controls. And this is where you will see the features. Protect data across computers. Protect data across mobile devices. Now getting back to the presentation. I will give you a slight overview of our product a UVM solution, Desktop Central. So this is the desktop central console, you will have different roles available for your organization. So this is the dashboard of desktop central. Desktop central is a server and client based model and it's an on-prem solution where you can take care of your patches using patch management option. So you can see on the top, the tabs here represent different features that is being offered from our UEM solution. So you can take care of software deployment inventory management, which includes hardware and software. You can also take care of OS imaging and deployment, your mobile device management features, 
and remote tools and can also generate reports for your audit purposes. So all these complex features are being offered from our one premium solution, which is Desktop Central. So this is a brief overview. If you want to have a detailed overview or a demo on this product, probably you can request us via chat or during the survey. We will let us experts, product experts, get on with you to define and explain the product in detail for you. I'll get back to the presentation. The second half of the session will be taken over by Shweta, who is a product expert from the Privilege Access Management Suite. She will explain what are the insider threats that's happening in 2018 and what can happen in 2019. And she will also bring in some proactive approach for combating these insider threats from a Privilege Access Management perspective. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Vinod. Hello, everyone, and thanks for taking the time to join today's webinar again. I'm Shweta, and I'm from the product marketing team of Manage Engineers Privileged Identity Management Suite. So, in the previous session, we saw about cyber attacks in general, their patterns, predictions for 2019, and how a endpoint management solution tool is effective in combating this problem. In this session, We'll narrow down our focus to addressing one important and growing cause of cyber attacks, the insider threats, and the strategies you can adopt to proactively mitigate them in 2019. So let's get started. Insider threats were and continue to be one of the most predominant vectors of cyber attacks for the time. Especially today, uh, with more and more users getting access to a lot of privileged resources in your network, and more and more third-party vendors being associated with your organization, we can comfortably say that cybersecurity is at stake more than ever before. And Information Security Forum report, Threat Horizon 2019, has listed insider attacks as one among the nine major cyber threats to look out for 2019. Hence, it's evident that organizations have to particularly lay focus on this area and look out for solutions to mitigate this problem. So, uh, before we get to the solution part, we'll quickly reacquaint ourselves with the scope of insider threats, how they stem and progress in your organization's network. We'll also uh, quickly run through some costly insider attacks of the past, how they were caused, and what uh, scenarios are organizations exactly facing today, and what kind of solutions uh, uh, can organizations incorporate to solve this problem. So yeah, let me continue. So here is a typical insider threat kill chain. Um, there are four stages involved in any insider threat. Um, the first stage is the recruitment or tipping point, uh, which represents the point of entry of malicious users in your organization, or the point where existing employees uh, decide to act against your organization and steal personal information. The second stage is the search or recon, where the malicious insider scans your network and identifies potential vulnerable targets. And the third stage is the data acquisition, where the insider gets access to privileged resources in your network by exploiting these vulnerabilities and uh, extract data from a series of locations. And uh, the fourth stage is the exfiltration of data, where the insider uh, or uh, eventually takes out the data and links to the external world and uh, removes tips from all the locations in your organization. So basically these are the four uh, stages involved in any insider attack that can occur in your organization. Um, now let's see about the nature of insider threats. Uh, insider threats can be broadly classified into two categories. Uh, one is the accidental exposure uh, and the other is the malicious attack. Accidental exposure is uh, mainly caused uh, due to the negligence or ignorance of employees. Uh, most of the times, employees happen to click on phished emails that uh, circulate uh, in your network and uh, for end up sharing company sensitive information to the uh, spoofed websites to, to, to the hackers outside 
uh, if the invoice have uh, access to privileged resources in their network. The second is the malicious attack, which is a form of an intentional attack. Uh, disgruntled employees exploit the vulnerabilities in your network and uh, they manage to gain access to privileged resources in your network and finally uh, leak out the data to the external world. So now that we have uh, seen about the stages of an insider attack uh, and uh, the categories of uh, the insider attack, now let's take a quick look at uh, what security risks are posed by those attacks. The first risk is the privilege credential theft. Privilege credential uh, remains to be one of the most predominant attack surfaces as well as uh, potential threat vectors of an insider attack. The second uh, security risk is the access control issues where um, uh, authorized administrators are uh, blocked access to privileged resources and mission critical systems in their network and unauthorized users gain access to uh, these resources. The next is the poor data hygiene, then the responsibilities of data spill, which might be uh, more of an unintentional data leak uh, that occurs when uh, insiders uh, attempt to hack, I mean, attempt to gain access to some of the sensitive data in your network. Then finally, there is the surreptitious fourth party infiltration. Uh, many times it happens that uh, when third party vendors are associated with your organization, they accidentally, accidentally or intentionally bring in a fourth party into your network uh, that establishes permanent foothold in your organization, establishes permanent backdoors, and gain access to some of the privileged resources and um, siphon off the sensitive data in your network. Um, so now that we have seen about the scope of insider threats in your network, how they develop and progress in your organization, Let's move on to see uh, some of the uh, costliest insider attacks uh, that have taken place in the past. Here is the target data breach. Uh, we all remember that, we cannot ever forget that. Uh, target is one of the uh, most uh, biggest re uh, retail chains of the US. The attack happened between November and December 2013. It was found that attackers were able to infest 40,000 to 60,000 point of sales terminals with malware and they were able to expose user uh, credit and debit details of uh, around 40 million uh, customers. So considering this massive infestation of uh, point of sales terminals, uh, many of the Gartner security analysts were able to conclude that there must have been some form of privilege abuse within the organization which uh, led to this huge uh, attack. And later it was found that hackers gained access to one of Target's Vendaf credentials, Vendaf privilege credentials, and they were able to expand their access within the network, gain uh, access to some of the business critical systems within the network, and finally expose uh, the massive um, details of customers. The second attack that we'll be seeing today is the nuanced communication breach. It occurred pretty recently in 2017. Uh, nuanced is a US based speech recognition firm which fell victim to uh, insider attack. It was found that a former employee of nuanced was able to get access to uh, many critical resources of nuanced and he was able to leak out the personal information regarding 45,000 patients. Uh, this is uh, again a pretty recent example of insider attack. So now that we have uh, discussed about insider attacks of the past, uh, let us also uh, spend time uh, speaking about the current scenario uh, faced by organizations and what kind of strategies they have to implement to thwart these attacks or what are the capabilities they exactly have to find in a pin solution that will eventually help them proactively combat these insider threats. Here is the GDPR. We cannot miss GDPR when speaking of uh, data thefts. The General Data Protect Protection Regulation came to force earlier this year, but the buzz around GDPR um, hasn't subsided yet. So with organizations beginning to face the repercussions of non-compliance of GDPR, 
uh, they are on the constantly on the lookout for various solutions and strategies to uh, get uh, complaint to the GDPR since the scope of GDPR is pretty vague. Um, however, the basic intent of GDPR, we all know that it remains very clear. Um, data protection, or more specifically, making personal data secure. But the scope of personal data is very vague and it's distributed in your organization. It's all pervasive and found in nearly in every of your IT infrastructures or every piece of your IT infrastructure. So organizations, they need to enforce strict access control and um, they need to meticulously track access to the, all the data stored in privileged assets in order to comply with the GDPR. Um, PAM, Privileged Access Management, is a security discipline that lays the foundation uh, for organizations to uh, begin complying with the GDPR. And the basic intent of this uh, security discipline is to, uh, um, to proactively uh, thwart off all insider threats by protecting all privileged resources in a network. So here is a collateral on how to comply with uh, GDPR using our uh, PIM solution. And uh, if you need access to this collateral, please pop it down in the Q&A box that you can see in your board over there console. So that we'll be sending out the resources um, uh, soon after the webinar. Uh, in this ebook, we've also discussed how a privileged access management lays the foundation for GDPR and what kind of uh, strategies you have to implement and what are the types of solutions you have to uh, adopt to comply with the GDPR. So yeah, please uh, pop, uh, send us your request if you need access to this collateral. Uh, and then the, here, is, uh, here are some of the key findings uh, for insider threats uh, based on the 2018 insider threat report published by CA Technology and predictions for 2019. It was found that um, around 90% of uh, uh, cybersecurity professionals feel that their organization is vulnerable to insider threats. Uh, this one was um, based on a 2018 Verizon report. It reports that around 58% of data breaches in the healthcare industry involved insider activity. And uh, one of the main enablers of insider threat is uh, too many uh, users with excessive privileged access, 37%. So when you're chatting out a privileged access security strategy for your organization, always remember that minimal privilege should be the key. We'll discuss that later in this webinar. And the privilege credentials remain to be one of the most predominant attack surfaces of an insider threat since they are the key to um, uh, many critical resources in your network. We've seen this earlier. And one of the biggest vulnerabilities for insider threats are weak passwords and bad password sharing practices, accounting to 56% and 44% respectively. Yeah, coming to the solution part now, we'll discuss what steps organizations have to implement within their network or what are the kind of solutions that you have to deploy uh, in, order, in order to comply with the GDPR and in, in order to thwart insider threats in 2019. There is what, what are the capabilities that you exactly have to look in a PIM solution. We see them one by one. The first step is the, the solution that you're going to deploy should uh, be able to discover all your privileged identities within your network environment and consolidate them in a secure centralized repository. So after uh, discovering and consolidating your privileged identities, Privileged identities here stand, stands not only for passwords, but all the other identities uh, that uh, get, uh, will give access to any critical, research, uh, critical resources in your network. It may be passwords, SSH keys, or SSL certificates, any type of privileged identity. So once you have discovered them and consolidated it in a secure repository, you should be able to get a clear picture of who can access what resources in your network. And then you have to enforce fine-grained password restrictions depending upon user roles. Also, after that, you need to implement a centralized password access control workflow, which requires users, depending on their roles, to obtain approvals from authorized admins before they can connect to the privileged assets. 
So after uh, laying restrictions on the privileged identities, you have to um, centralize control on access pathways for remote access records. Uh, establish a central gateway only through which all the requests to remote assets can be uh, routed off and shut off all remote access requests from unapproved services in your network. Also, when enabling remote access uh, requests to users on a temporary basis, make it a point to never ever uh, share uh, passwords in clear text, plain text. Always encrypt them before sharing them to users who uh, get access to privileged resources on a temporary basis. Finally, the last step you have to look for in your build solution is make sure the solution is able to audit all user activities around privileged accounts and it's, it should be able to store the audits in a tamper proof location so that it can be retrieved by administrators as and when required. Also, you have to enable real time notifications for um, critical operations such as privileged account creation, deletion, or remote access, etc. So that if something goes wrong, the administrator is instantly notified and, and he can take steps to um, combat the problem, combat the attack or combat whatever has gone wrong. So here are some of uh, the eight must-dos for a privileged, perfect account, perfect privileged account management strategy. This uh, collateral again helps you to look out what are the capabilities that you have to uh, uh, look for in your build solution. So before you uh, uh, go to the market to find a build solution, make sure that the solution uh, comprises of all these capabilities. Again, if you uh, want these collateral, please pop them in your QA box in your GoToWebinar console so that we can send it to you. So uh, summing up um, what we have seen before, uh, coming to privileged identities, you have to remember three things to for uh, your organization for your organization to have a perfect privileged access security strategy. Get them all under one roof uh, in a secure central repository. Start caring about sharing. Enforce fine-grained access restrictions on privileged credentials and establish a centralized request approval mechanism. And finally, check and double check everything. Make sure all user activities around privileged uh, resources are audited thoroughly. So, at uh, Manage Engine, we have rolled out our privileged identity management suite, the PIM suite, a year back. You can take a look at it, uh, which serves as a comprehensive, unified uh, platform for managing all your privileged identities. Uh, here is a, a quick uh, split up of the suite's functionality. The PIM suite is basically built on Manage Engine's top two security solutions, the Password Manager Pro and Key Manager Plus, with each focusing on the different avenues of securing your privilege access. Password Manager Pro serves as an enterprise password vault, centralizes and delegates access requests to critical resources, and provides out of the box session scheduling capabilities so that uh, IT admins can have an upper hand on all the remote sessions uh, conducted in your network. And Key Manager Plus, the other solution, focuses on the management of two important but often overlooked privileged identities, the SSH keys and SSL certificates. So these two solutions are tightly integrated to form the PIM suite, um, comprehensive unified privileged identity management platform that serves as a one-stop solution for securing and managing your privileged access in your organization. So if you want a demo of the PIM suite, a quick demo of the PIM suite, please pop them again in the Q, uh, QA box in your GoToWebinar console, or please notify us through the survey that will be conducted after this webinar so that we'll quickly have our tech experts reach out to you. And with that, the webinar comes to a wrap, and thank you very much for joining the session once again. And I hand over the control to Srinaka, the host for this webinar. Uh, thank you, Giridhar and Shweta, for an insightful webinar session on the proactive spectrum of the cybersecurity strategy. Uh, we'll be covering the reactive measures in our next and final part of our webinar series on the 15th of November. In the meanwhile, uh, we'd like for quick feedback from you uh, on our session today and get all the access to the resources you need. And before we wrap up, 
let's 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 take a take a look at the question and on, the questions that we have received so far. So here's a question for the uh, UEM part. Will Manage Engine's UEM solution help us monitor software usage metrics? Thank you, Larika, for uh, letting me know the question. Regarding uh, software management of UEM solution, Desktop Central, you will be able to actually monitor software usage metrics using our software management module. So you will be able to manage what are the actual usage of the software, the commercial software, which will help you renew the licenses based upon the demand. So yes, you can monitor software usage metrics using Desktop Central. So here's another question on the privileged identity management. How to handle privileged access requests needed only on a temporary basis? Uh, this is an interesting question. So the key is to um, deploy a solution that incorporates a request approve workflow mechanism so that all the temporary access requests can be um, approved only by authorized address. That is the temporary, uh, the user who uh, requests for a temporary access can, uh, should be also should be able to uh, access the privileged asset only on the time frame basis. So after he uh, goes to the resource and performs his operation, his access will be automatically denied after a particular timeline so that he'll be no longer given access to that resource. Uh, here's another question on the UEM solution part. Does your UEM solution provide support to uh, remote troubleshooting and screen recording capabilities? Yes, our UEM solution, Desktop, Desktop Center, do support remote troubleshooting. I'm sorry I didn't mention about our remote control capabilities because I thought the security part will be the priority here. So yes, our UEM solution will support remote troubleshooting and you can also record screens and you can also back it blacken your user monitors when you want to work something business sensitive. So we have a lot of remote control capabilities which will allow you to remotely monitor and manage your registries, your events, remotely deploy some commands, CMD commands to your target admissions. So that will be a yes for the question. How do I give a technician or a user access to a critical asset without revealing him the credentials? Yeah, again, as I discussed in the presentation, uh, when it comes to securing your privileged access, you should never ever reveal your uh, passwords and plaintiffs. So, um, the key will be, the solution here will be to incorporate a solution that, uh, incorporate a PIM solution in your network that will serve as the gateway for handling all the privileged uh, access requests. Then the user or technician has to be authenticated into the PIM solution first, maybe using his AD credentials or whatever, and that PIM solution should tunnel a connection to the privileged resource, and the user should never be given access to the resource directly. So that will be the answer for this question. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any further questions, please do uh, put them on our Q&A box so that we can address them right away. So thank you everyone for attending the first part of our webinar series. Uh, we have our second part coming up on the 15th of November, which will cover the re reactive measures of a cybersecurity strategy. Uh, we look forward to your participation in the series. Uh, until then, it's me, Sri Leka, and uh, Giridhar and Shweta signing off for now. Thank you.